Every year, Ford Motor Company partners with the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History to present the Ford Freedom Awards. This year's celebration focused on the achievements of past and present technology entrepreneurs. The late engineer and inventor Elijah McCoy was honored for dedicating his life to improving the African American community and the world at large. McCoy was raised in Michigan and received nearly 60 patents for his inventions. He died in Detroit in 1929. Here to tell us more about this year's event is the president and CEO of the Wright Museum, Wanda Moore. It's good to have you back oh, on American Life Journal. You're like a staple here. Always and when I don't have you, I have your <laughs> wonderful staff here to talk about stuff that's going on well, well, uh, at the museum. For the opportunity. Yeah, no, uh, it's always great to have you guys here. Um, uh, so tell me about this year's Ford Freedom Awards. Oh, this year was amazing. It really was. It was a, a, a wonderful opportunity for us to not only honor Elijah McCoy uh, for and and have people really bring attention to him. You know, people know who he is. They but sort they don't, of know. Yeah, because they, well, the real McCoy. <laughs> right. Everybody knows. The, they know the term, the yes. real McCoy. Yes. And uh, and to then have people be able to connect it to this Michigander, right? To and and to what he contributed so greatly to technology, sure. especially at a time when it's so important and, and prominent in all of our lives. Yeah, and. When well, we should tell the story, the real McCoy. That comes from a product he invented that had several knockoffs yes. uh, that were competing uh, with it. And people would say, well, I don't want... I don't want that substitute. I want the real I McCoy. I need the real McCoy. Because at the time, of course, you know, uh, he was the son of, of his, his parents had been enslaved and they escaped and 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 moved to Canada. Uh -huh. And uh, and so during that period of time, it was although he was very uh, much an engineer, it was very difficult for him to be able to get patents in his name and right. and, and and have take ownership. So oftentimes, the people that he worked for uh, would take the credit for the work. And and so he was not able to really start his own business until much, much later in life. And right. by that time, you know, it was really too late, much of the work that's owned by someone else. Mm -hmm. And so they would start to then try to create knockoffs of what he had done because he really didn't, you know, he didn't, it wasn't in his name and he didn't have ownership of it. Right. People say, no, I don't want that. I want right. the real McCoy. I want, I want the, the real, real thing. I want the so real the real thing. McCoy has stuck with us yeah. all of this, all of this time and has become a term that we're all familiar with when we want something that's real <laughs> That's and genuine. True. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and that's a great metaphor, uh, also for uh, the sort of story of, of African American history in technology and engineering. Uh, that that um, that need and that drive to, to to be to be able to be genuine and and real uh, and not pretend that this is not part of. American history or our history. And and because of that history, so many of our young people now believe that, you know, that things that were were invented by African Americans were invented by someone else. By somebody not, else. Yeah, they don't attribute that to 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 to, to people like them. Yes. So this 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 whole event was very, very important, not only to help them understand that history and understand that by under, knowing the history and understanding who those people are, that what's possible in their lives, yeah. but to give them some current real day models uh, so that they could talk to and meet with and hear their stories, yeah. and and it, that was that was really what was phenomenal about this whole event. Right, the young people that came in. Well, and, and Ford has been working. Uh, the Ford Foundation, the Ford Family Foundation, I should say, has been working in this space for a good long time now. Really trying to push that idea of. Uh, STEM and STEAM uh, education for minority kids who so often either don't see themselves uh, as having that opportunity or s still are told that it's not for them. Absolutely. You know, the Ford Motor Company Fund actually has been working with us for 17 years on, on Ford Freedom Awards. And, and this year, uh, because Ford itself sees itself as a, as a technology company, uh, and it, it, it saw that it was a really good, important theme for them to support. And so we are so grateful that they did and, uh, and, and helped bright, bright bring in all of these wonderful people. Yeah. Laura uh, Weedman Powers, whose uh, company is called Code, Code 2040, because uh, by 2040, she wants to go out of business yeah. <laughs> because she would like to, her company is one that um, provides scholarships for black and Latinos to go into engineering and to go into projects out in Silicon Valley. And also for, you know, so that's important. The Kapoor's, they also provide, you know, help provide, create a pipeline 
for young people to go into studying uh, engineering and, and all the STEM areas. But more importantly, they do social entrepreneurial projects. So they provide capital right. for young people that want to go into business and got really, really great ideas. They have a summer camp that they do, and 90% uh, of their kids, 99% of their kids go to college yeah, yeah. out of that. So it's, you know, it was really stimulating for all of the students that participated. We had about 1,200 students that came to the essay, um, the, 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 the student lecture series that morning, and had amazing questions. The, the students that participated, uh, almost 800 in an essay contest, had to create, uh, write an essay about an app that they would create to solve a problem, solve a problem. that either yeah. they or their students, fellow students, would have. Yeah. And th I mean, the ideas were as just astounding. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was uh, a judge for one of the Ford Foundation's contests uh, for young people uh, designing apps uh, a couple of months ago, and I was absolutely blown away not just by the ideas that these kids came up with, which, which were fabulous, but, uh, but also the execution. Uh, in, in a few days, they were able to build these apps and I was able to use them uh, yeah. to see how they worked. I mean, it's really amazing how quickly their minds just sort of tune into this stuff uh, and, and make a difference. Yeah. Barrington Irvin, who uh, is a, uh, was the, 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 the youngest and the first African American to fly around the world solo built his plane, but grew up in, uh, in Miami, said that he, you know, he never expected to live a long life. <laughs> he was going to, you know, and, and for, for, he, he, he gave up a scholarship, a football scholarship to Florida to, because he met an airline pilot who became his mentor. Yeah. And he built this plane, and now he has a lab, a flying lab, in which he uh, puts kids in the plane and <laughs> drives and flies them around uh, with a lab doing science projects. Is that not amazing? Yeah, look at that. That's a, that's really something. Uh, so you have some other things going on at the at the museum that I want to talk about in the last little part of our segment here. Uh, you guys are going to be on television, celebrated as uh, the mysteries of the museum, correct? Isn't that fabulous? Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and our 50th birthday, too. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> what a great right. birthday present. Uh, well, tell me about what that what that show is. Well, um, actually, we are going to, once again, showcase Garrett Morgan's uh, gas mask. Right. We have that gas mask as yes. part of our collection. Yeah. And so we're going to showcase that. Uh, uh, on this on this show yeah. and um, and when is when is the show scheduled to, to air? Actually, it's going to start. It's going to begin airing this weekend. Okay. okay. So uh, on, they were short on, several times. So it's, and it's on the, the the Science Channel. The Science Channel. The yeah. Science Channel. There yes. you go. Yeah. So or, we, or the Travel Channel. Travel Channel. The Travel, travel channel. channel. I was like, science. What's the Science? See, I'm, well, we're talking about science and technology. So that's, <laughs> that's right. Embedded oh, in it's it. on the Travel Channel. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be wonderful exposure. Uh, Absolutely. For the museum. Absolutely. Yeah. Because once people come to see Garrett Morgan's gas mask, they're going to get to see we'll lots of all other the things. Other things that yes, we have. Yes. Right? Our, you know, our exhibition in Still We Rise, which is twenty thousand square feet, that takes you from prehistoric Africa to modern day Detroit, and actually, really, it is one of a kind. Yes. Uh, in, yes. in the country, and and so we are really excited about that. Yeah. Uh, because it's our 50th anniversary, we now have an exhibition on uh, Dr. Wright. We will have an upcoming exhibition called Inspiring Beauty on 50 years of the Ebony Fashion Fair. And while that's about fashion, and the other important thing about this exhibition is that when Ebony Fashion Fair was traveling around, it was the one major event in the African American community that kept other yes. organizations alive because it was their major fundraiser it was their for major the year. Fundraiser, sure, sure. So it, it really it's one had, of those things that we don't we always remember, right? Yeah, and we don't think we just think about oh, it was fashion. Yeah. It was, but yeah. it was the fundraiser right. to to keep many of our social and uh, social service organizations, our religious organizations, alive. Uh, to continue to do the work in the community that they did. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that uh, you have coming up at the museum is the celebration of Malcolm X's uh, 90th birthday. Yes, 90th birthday on May 19th. Uh -huh. And we want everybody to come out. It's going to be terrific. The last poets yeah. will be there to perform. Right, right. Uh, that's wonderful. And that's, uh, I, I, I always talk about the sort of importance of demystifying uh, people in, in our history. No one, no one is more deserving of that or more in need of it, perhaps, uh, than Malcolm X. Uh, and and I would imagine you guys will also have some great stuff from his time in Detroit. In that, in absolutely, that we will. You know, we have a, a small collection of Malcolm X papers that will also be on exhibition. And and the the other really terrific thing about that is that because Malcolm X, there's so many people in Detroit that personally knew Malcolm uh, knew X him, sure. and connected with him and was a part of his work. 
So you have this first, these first person stories, which is the most important thing in history. Yeah. So you, the, the first person, right. that per, you know, you get that's, that, that's, that real, authentic. Uh, telling of of what happened, Absolutely. not just a story about. So you have that that you will have that as part of this celebration. So we invite everybody to come out on May nineteenth. It's going to be an amazing, amazing evening. Yeah, all right. And there are lots of other things going on with our fiftieth anniversary. So visit our website. Yeah, all year you Absolutely. guys are, are we have the Call of the Drum 50th. coming up in July. It's a great two day drumming festival. Of course, our African World Festival the third weekend uh, in August, as as which is going to be amazing as well as always. Um, and and. Um, uh, you know, we, we just go on the website yeah. and get uh, and go visit. That's the come. You, come well, I think if you don't come to visit, <laughs> you will really be disappointed. Yeah. We have storytelling this coming Friday. Yes. the Secret Society of, of, of Twisted Stories. Twisted Stories. Story Story Tell us that's a wonderful event if people oh, yes. have not been to it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Always great to have you here and catch up with what's going on at the museum. I'll see you at the museum. Yes, of course you will. <laughs> You'll always see my kids there. They go more frequently than I do. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Thanks for being here. Thank you. That's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can get more information about our guests at AmericanBlackJournal.org. And as always, connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. Plus, you can now hear our program on WDET 1019 FM. We'll see you next time.